I think there are good conversations to be had about a lot of stuff related to how we handled the coronavirus. You know, were lockdowns effective? Was there enough data to support the huge measures we took? Um, you know, why didn't we have the option to show I was infected a month ago? Why do I need to be vaccinated? Why did why wasn't that option ever a thing in the United States? I don't think it was. Um, there are really good questions to be asked there. But all the people asking the questions are also trying to tell you that ivermectin and monoclonal antibodies are the way to go for everything, and the vaccine is evil, and they're just going to turn you gay like the frogs. Yeah, and, and it's like <laughs> Jesus. Like you can't. There's like no place to. Re reasonably criticized from because all of the people that are criticizing aren't doing it with an open mind or, uh, you know, they're not reading studies or doing anything. They're saying like, I do my own research, which means they listen to whatever the last guy on Joe Rogan said, and now they're parroting that opinion 100%. Easy now. Yeah. No, Easy no, now, bro. The last guy on Joe Rogan, not Joe Rogan, okay? That Robert Malone guy on Joe Rogan got me real fired That's up. That's one guest. People see him as like the father of mRNA technology. He published one paper, okay? What do you mean people? Which people think that? Joe There's... Rogan fans. I get, like, I'll, I run into these people. I start arguing with people and they start setting me what about I'm a Joe Rogan fan and I appreciate the vaccine. That's good. I'm glad you do. But there's definitely like so, a type. so but you said there's a type. There's a type. What's the type? What's the type of Joe Rogan fan? Anti-establishment. I think that's not Joe Rogan. That's like that's a general public discourse. There's a default anti-establishment on the on the right and the left. That's the default easy thing to go to. I think Joe Rogan fans are definitely a certain type of anti-establishment though. Like I could guess the Joe Rogan fan like if I were to do general population versus Joe Rogan fan, who do you think is more likely to be anti-vaccine? Do you have data on this? <laughs> or are you just guessing? Yeah. Just guessing. Yeah. I think you are actually judging. I am. I think, yeah. I think you're judging. Because I think you're also, the beautiful thing about podcasting, this mm -hmm. could be similar to streaming, is there's a large number of people that just listen. Like, what, what does it mean to be a Joe Rogan fan? I don't think you just listen. I think people listen and absorb the information. I would say that the Joe Rogan fan base is as divided in the vaccine as the general public. Gotcha. Man, I'm gonna look for polling data on that. I'm sure somebody's gotta have done it out there, but. No, but you're you're basically revealing the fact they have no data, you're using your own judgment. For sure. Uh, based so on how he's had conversations about how his experience with the coronavirus, and then based on the guests that have come on that have talked and echoed a lot of like anti-vax talking points and been completely unchallenged, and then based on statements he's made about like myocarditis and the vaccine and everything as well, yeah. So the, it's the level of challenge or not that he's doing. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and then what his true positions are, and then the types of guests he typically chooses to bring on to talk about the vaccines, yeah. Okay, but that represents somehow a deep anti-establishment feeling versus think, just the vaccine. I mean, I've seen the vaccine and other things being a thing that broke people. They I think seem all to the coronavirus, that whole two, one or two years broke <laughs> a lot of people. There's a lot of emotion and emotion quickly uh, solidified into an opinion that almost had nothing to do with like re like thinking through and updating your knowledge and so on. You just made up a made up your mind. Yeah, but I think a lot of it comes from that anti-establishment place. Like what, the vaccine represents the ultimate of establishment. It was a huge private company backed by a huge. Uh, public government, and there's Fauci, and there's Biden, and there's Pfizer, and there's all these countries locking us up in our homes, telling us to do a thing. Like the vaccine was like the ultimate like submission tool to like show you that the government owns you. Not only do you have to get injected once, it's a series, and then you got to get boosters, and it's like they're trying to keep you under their thumb, and it's that's the control. Um, I feel like that vaccine became like the ultimate rallying cry between like, do you support? Are you a sellout that is going to believe whatever the government tells the sheep to take, or are you going to be like the guy that stands against the crowd and gets fired from his job and pulls his kids from school because they're not going to let the evil Fauci medicine, you know, jab them in the arm? And the funny thing is the crowd that stands against the institution is not larger than the crowd of sheep. <laughs> There's like one sheep standing there. Sure, man, yeah, or it feels that way sometimes. One right? vaccinated sheep. Well, okay, uh, well, what's the defense of institutions? How do you regain the trust of institutions? Like, for first of all, do you think that there's ways in which uh, WHO, CDC failed? And do you think there's criticism towards Pfizer and the big pharma companies that's deserved? Damn, it's the pharma companies, I'm not sure. Um, for CDC and WHO, so here's a criticism that I have of all of academia, and I feel it stronger and stronger every day. I don't think it's enough to be a researcher or to be correct about issues. Academia needs to increase its ability to communicate. 
Um, it is just an a, an unbelievable, unmitigated failure that academics are unwilling to wade into the complicated topics uh, that exist today because other people are, you know? First you call me spineless, and then you call me a bad communicator. But no, look, you're here, you're doing it. So you get props for me, okay? Good job. That motherfucker. But there are like so many, but I'm sure you've, I'm sure that you must have um, heard another fellow academic, a fellow colleague express some amount of frustration about like in their specific discipline, they know something to be true. And they know that like a lot of the messaging is like wrong or bad in the public about it, but they're never going to step out and say anything because either one, they're very measured and careful with their tech, which they feel is incompatible with what people want to hear. Or two, they're really worried that they might be incorrect. So they're going to be cautious while everybody else is going out and like hardcore. And, and, their and they also don't have the support of institutions for them to go out on a limb. Yeah. That too. So like to take risks, for example, I've, I've heard that with um, lab leak theory, I've had a lot of biologists, virologists, friends that are like, yeah, it's obviously leaked from a lab okay. like early on. Oh, uh, maybe. Okay. We can fight over this one, but no, sorry, let's, go let's ahead. Fight, no, no, keep talking. Let, 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 we can fight over this, but like they, okay. I, I should sort of, backstep and say like that's like you talk about shooting the shit you haven't really investigated but it's your gut mm -hmm. like this doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. they would never say that publicly of course mostly because you're saying like what they would all say is like we want to see data yeah which would be good which, which is fine so they're going with like like this is too many coincidences in the same place that's the the logic but they don't want to say anything because there's no data you need to have evidence you need to have actual evidence to say one way or the other there's that but there's also just like you said i mean if effective effective communication you're a fan of sean carroll who's oh one of yes the he's like one of the only people in this whole planet that I like besides you. I love Sean like Carroll. This, anytime Sean Carroll is brought up as evidenced, there's a smile that comes over your face. I love it. Of like Such joy, yeah. of like a little kid thinking about Santa Claus. Okay, I love Sean Carroll too. I, just to be clear, to I love Sean Carroll because there. I hate this divide between like you're either STEM or you're like philosophy, arts, and all that yeah. other stuff. And the two worlds can never cross. And I love that he was so good at physics, but like explores and pays attention to all of the like sociological stuff too. It's so rare to find that quality in a person. He's legit. One of the really, really, really special minds. But you don't have to be a Sean Carroll. You can be just a little better at educating. Another person in the... Uh, in the medical and the health space is uh, somebody named Andrew Huberman, a friend of mine from uh, Stanford. He's an incredible educator. Mm -hmm. There's the kind of process in science they usually call like review or survey papers, where you basically summarize all that's going on, integrate it and like draw wisdom from it and also project like, where is the discipline headed? And Andrew does that basically on all these subcomponents of the different stuff going on in, in neuroscience and biology, neurobiology, all that. He's able to, he does a, a podcast called Huberman Lab where he just summarizes all and is able to explain like, what does that actually mean for your, for your life in terms of protocols of how to make your life better. I feel like people should be able to do that more and more. But with viral virology and, oh boy, that's a tricky one. That's a really tricky one. I wish that people could have honest conversations. Like I attack a lot of people that do the lab leak theory stuff, but truly we should be able to have that conversation publicly. It just, it always feels like the people that are having the conversation don't ever really want to have the conversation. They're not being honest. Like, Abby, like, I'm a guy that like does his own research and it's so boring you, reading studies and a lot of it I can only do abstracts and like I like it's so much work but I'll never ever say that about myself. I'm a guy that does his own research because every time I hear somebody say that they don't do any research. When they say they do their own research what they mean is they've seen one podcast and their opinion on it is What completely. podcast is that? Definitely not mine because it was mine I wouldn't be criticizing anything they say. Mm -hmm. um, right. but yeah so like lab leak is another one where it's like well how do you know it's lab leak? <laughs> How do I know it's lab leak? Uh, because Fauci lied and Hunter Biden right. uh, laptop. And it's right. like, okay, come on, you haven't engaged with it at all. There's really interesting research that shows there's a really strong study that shows that there's like a high degree of certainty that it came from the wet markets. Very, very high degree of certainty. And there, there was an article that came out recently where it's like, Senate concludes that virus actually came from uh, the Wuhan virology lab or whatever. Um, and that whole article, if you actually read it, it never says that in the article. I don't know why they tweeted it with that headline. Um, but yeah, it's to back up. I'm sorry. I think we should have good. You should be sorry. Yeah, I'm not sorry. Actually, I get to ramble here. Okay, I'm here for a long time. I rescind Very my nice. apology. Okay, I actually rescind my apology. Um, we should be able to have challenging <laughs> conversations about things. But you gotta, man, be well read on both sides. Not, not this like I do my own research, so I don't believe anything that Fauci says. Like, come on, dude. dude like, you can do better than that. Not you personally, but gotcha. How does that feel? Uh, so for people who don't know, that's, that's the catchphrase. <laughs> gotcha. Through all tragedy 
and triumph through all the roller coaster of life, your response to it is gotcha.